Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and a very warm evening, good evening from the UK. My name is Dr. Madeline Chan and I will be presenting the film and music show for the next, let's say, 40 minutes on USA Global TV and Radio. And I want to say a warm welcome to our Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn viewers, as well as YouTube. Before I bring in today's guest on the film and music show, I just would like to share with you the incredible movement of the stats for USA Global TV and Radio, the YouTube channel. As from today, we are currently at 47.9K subscribers. That is phenomenal. So please do keep on subscribing, supporting us, helping us with helping us to share education, hope, giving you the opportunity to promote your brand, your life story, all that and the above. And Dr. Jacqueline's YouTube channel is now at 24.1K, 24,100 subscribers. How phenomenal is that? Again, please do support both channels. We can grow, we can evolve, we can help, we can connect. We can help the mothership grow and evolve and have this new wave of media of people that are just there to help grow USA Global TV and radio and be part of this thriving community. All right, now let's get on some exciting news. Let's bring on today's guest. And she is an author, a founder, the owner of Fulfill to Be. She coaches, trains, and facilitates, and consult she's a consultant. She plays piano. She was a singer in a gospel choir. She is phenomenal in humani humanities and human resources. And because of her expertise, she won a state Senate award for community service, the National Algonon Sydney Sullivan Award for Character and Humanity. 
She has a passion for helping others. She loves to read. She loves to exercise. And most importantly, she loves spending time with her family. She's currently in Colombia on her vacation. She's absolutely phenomenal. Film and Music Show welcomes today the wonderful Kendra Q. Dodd. Thank you. That was a wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. I love it. I was like, oh my gosh, who's going to be the guest? Is it me? <laughs> well, it's you that's accomplished all this and more. My goodness. Well, thank you for being with us and thank being you. on your holiday. How fabulous yes. in Colombia. Yes. It's wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to talk to about, um, Kendra, is mm -hmm. can you share with our audience space of a paragraph who you are well i've always said who you are but what what you'd like to share and mm. then we can go into our our beautiful questions and finding out more oh, I, I i think the biggest thing i probably want to share is that every part of adversity there is a silver lining or every part of something so you know i've had challenges in life even from when i was born that um I had to have surgery on my feet. I couldn't walk and so it was behind, but it always keeps up. You just gotta keep going, keep growing. So uh, that's probably the biggest thing about me, like those things that little things happen. Uh, like I lost, I was telling them before the show, I lost my luggage, you know, I've been here since Tuesday and I just got my luggage an hour ago, but I am still, it was perfect timing. I'm refreshed, I'm ready to talk. <laughs> and you look fabulous by the way as well. Yeah. So going back to an operation on the soles of your feet, what was all this about? Um, well, I, it was the, my feet were actually turned in as a child. So they had to have operations. And then I had to wear these braces and it was a bar. So I had shoes and, as an infant and a toddler, and then they had to put a bar. So I could not really, I couldn't walk. And so when it was time to walk, I had to learn how to, you know, move like this or hop but my parents said i still was able to get around <laughs> so you were still grounded yes oh, still, grounded. still so grounded so if you can imagine a bar between your feet and your feet being bolted to that bar but how could you balance uh, i made it work wow absolutely and how long did you have these bars oh probably till Probably, I think, until like 14, 16, almost two years, I would say, to be fair, off and on. I can yeah. wear them at night. You know, you gradually, you know, get better and better and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that, well that's, that's amazing. You got, you went through that and you, you pulled through it. That's yeah. Great. Um, so before we go on about what you're doing with Fulfill to Be, I'd like to mm -hmm. talk to, about your voice how powerful your voice is. Mm. Being part of a gospel choir, how did you become part of this journey with your voice? Well, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was very shy, but I grew up, the region that I grew up in the United States, it was very common uh, within the church that um, you play. I, I went to a church that was known. Matter of fact, they recorded they were re the, the choir was known for recording so it was a very musical area in which i grew up and uh they supported me in playing the piano um but i just love i love music by the way but especially gospel music and so i started in young probably in my preteens, like 13 14 and then when i went to the university i sung at the university as well that's incredible. I mean, being in a gospel choir, there's all kinds of movements, all different voices going mm -hmm. on at the same time. I mean, it's phenomenal. What range or what, what 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 part of the choir were you part of? I, you know, I, I tease people like it, they get excited and they're like, oh, you were part of a gospel choir. I'm like, I'm second alto. So anyone that are musicians. I mean, an alto already fills in the harmony, but second alto, you're definitely just every other hum and harmonizing. So uh, <laughs> if you could keep a tune and you can sing a word, every other word within a, you know, a stanza, yeah. you're good. 
you are fit kendra you are filling the concert hall with that yeah. second alto without a doubt that's that's impressive yeah so with going with your voice and then you began playing piano mm -hmm. did play piano come first or the voice the piano was first um piano was first i started piano um gosh I, i'm better with grades and i know that doesn't help people so fifth grade would have been maybe 11 i'm thinking um fourth or fifth grade like 10 or 11. uh i started playing the piano um and thought i was going to major in music or thought of it um i a local person i um took lessons and she said well i think that kendra is gifted and there was a college that had a pre-college program and I auditioned and I got in. And so I went to a un local university in my teenage years and studied music and played the piano. That's very young to go to university in the teenage It was years. a special program that you did and it was very expensive. So I had to play for I didn't, my, my, my mom was a teacher and my dad was a officer, police officer. Yeah. Um, and so we didn't make much money. And so I had to do scholarships and I had to play to get the money and things like That's, that. So, yeah. I mean, to get a scholarship is so difficult to attain and achieve. So that's phenomenal. And how old were you? 11th grade? Maybe mm, about, about, 14, 15. 14. Yeah, I, I did. I By the time I got to my 12th grade, though, I it was too hard. <laughs> it was too much. And was it was it um, classical concert or? It was classical. Jazz? Yes, classical. it was classical. Yeah. So with the grades and everything. Yes, I can imagine. But yes. that's that's fantastic. So do you play piano for Still, a hobby? Yeah. You know, I just for soothing. I, for soothing when it's when yeah. I'm, um, you know, maybe feeling down, I will go and get on the piano and I never upgrade it to a baby grand. I still have the same upright that I had when I was a child. And it's in pristine condition. I will make sure I still get it <laughs> tuned and you have to get it tuned regularly. Um, Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe while you're on holiday, you might be going in and giving a spin in a tune here and there. Oh. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> right, so thank you for that, Kendra. Yes. What I'd like to talk about now is your journey of being in human resources and lending your voice to empower other one, others mm. to help them gain confidence yes. in speaking engagements. At what point in your life did you feel you had a gift of mm. the voice of confidence i'm still wondering that today <laughs> <laughs> you have to stay humble i heard something today that was amazing i was watching um a morning show and someone asked um they said, what was the best advice from your mother? And she said, if you strut too hard, you'll trip. Meaning stay humble. Stay humble. Yeah. So strutting means to, you know, walk with yeah. overconfidence. And so I, I would say, you know, when I started my business 13 years ago of saying, okay, I, I want to do it my way because that's what works. And my, my way being selfish, it's just... No. I realized that there were certain conformities that I think people need to have liberties. And so that's when I started my business. And I would say when I felt confident enough to be confident to help others when I started my own business. That's it. Well, you know, they say sometimes it takes an incident or a situation where it gives you the opportunity to, to, to flourish, to show your, your voice, whether it's a voice for yourself or a voice for others, in what capacity did, um, was it for you, a voice for you or helping another person to communicate what they wanted to communicate? You know, I think the biggest thing is that I just, I know what it feels like to feel like you're alone 
I know what it feels like. You know, I was very shy growing up. Actually, I write about that in the introduction of who I am in my book. Um, but I always wanted people to feel valued before it became a cliche, right? Now it's a thing. I want to feel valued, belonging. But I always wanted to feel that because I know what it feels like. When my dad became, when he got out of the academy, we had to move far, far you know, far away. Um, that was the rule. So once he finished the academy, so I left all, I came from, a, my mom had a big family. And so it just isolating. It was just my parents and I am the oldest. Um, and navigating through that new terrain and just, I want people to feel valued. So that's where the voice came from that, okay, if you can't speak, I'll speak for you and, and help you. And, and with the fact that you come from a big family, do you, have you had the emotional support from your family whilst you've been on this journey, as you're still on the journey? From a distance, because we moved away. I mean, I left, I have 28 first cousins on my mom's side. Yes, I have 28. <laughs> yes. Fabulous. My, but can you imagine though, then at five years old before I started school that then it's just the three of us, my mom and dad and I. And so, um, yes, externally, they are very still close and they still include me, but I didn't grow up with them. Uh, and so yes and no, like if I was to call them right now and say, Hey, I need this support, they would. Um, but I didn't have the luxury. I would only see them really from quality time in the summers. Yeah. And the fact yeah. that you did, you did, you did a lot of support yourself mm -hmm. to support yourself at university, being at university at such a young age. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love that. I want to talk about the award, the State Senate Award, can you tell our viewers what it represents and what it meant for you to be awarded the National Well, award? I was able to, yeah, I was able to stay in school. It's just the pre-college program, the music program, they called it a pre-college program. So I was going to school and then going to this college. So just want to be clear, I still was able to, thank goodness, have my high school career. Um, I was just very busy. As you can see, I had to do that. Like I said, my senior year though, I was done. I was like, because I had to start transposing music. So I had to go from one key to another and it just became a lot um, having to do that. But I would say the award was something of, I just community service. I just know that everyone can give to someone that could be in a worse situation than you, always. Like I was telling the Uber driver that I haven't had my clothes for three days. And guess what he said? I just dropped someone off that didn't have clothes for five days. So someone always can be worse. And so I just, I was shocked when I received the award because I can't even remember all the things. Honestly, I did that I think is simple because I grew up from a service family, right? Like I said, with my mom being a teacher and my dad being in the police and a lot of my uncles were in the military as well that is quite a vast background of knowledge and support and key key workers as well yes wow. that's yes. so what does it mean um, with character and humanity so mm. is that anything to do with with voice or in, engaging people to bring confidence I did, you know, I think with that, um, a lot of what I did, um, especially with the Algonon, it was, that was college when I, re I was in my college years when that occurred. Um, I would just set up communities. I would go to nursing homes. I would, you know, go to different churches or events, or I would create service. I was part of a, a service organization and I was the president and I helped create different initiatives, um, like reading initiatives. Um, going to different schools that were underprivileged. So just creating different things within the community that we could give back. And you it's easier than you think. Yeah, There's always what, what you, you make it sound very easy, but I'm it's sure you. I'm sure when you put it into action, it's not as easy. <laughs> it takes hard work, focus, and it clearly shows that you have achieved this and more. Um, I wanted to ask about your coaching. So let's go on to 
the website okay. kendraq.com so if mm -hmm. heather our lovely producer for today yes here we go so can you tell us about your website kendra so yes i hope it's engaging <laughs> that you see uh that you have there um but as you can see i think the biggest thing it says helping people um i think the key service um uh, the biggest things is consulting to coaching to training uh and speaking the keynote speaking if uh large populations need me to right. be there as well mm -hmm. it's a, it's beautiful your website has it's very branded the colors thank you it's thank you yes i love those colors it and I love that smile. That's a great picture. Thank great you. Great smile. Makes you want you. people magnetized to you. Mm -hmm. I love it. So Thank it you. says at the top, sorry, um, uh, mm -hmm. Heather, at the top it says, uh, was it, oh, I will just go, yeah, services and solutions. Can we click on that? Awesome. Here we go in. If it, clicks <laughs> yes there we go service and solution there we go <laughs> can you tell us as we scroll down there we go you've got stars <laughs> in your hand and you're here keynote key speaker lennox yes that's a, it's a manufacturing that was an international that was a uh, conference international conference that we're setting up it was local and they had it um yeah. had me mic that was at a women's women's conference as well. Mm -hmm. um, that was at an awards ceremony. Yes. Yeah. That was a workshop, actually. That was a really <laughs> cool workshop. I love the stars. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Fantastic. So, what is your strategy? <laughs> In a <laughs> well, each one is different. I think what people don't realize is what is the objective. Um, mm -hmm. So when it comes to the workplace, you know, and culture consulting, um, I focus on what change management. Change management is different than project management. Project management is assessing a process. Change management is understanding the human need in the change of the process. So it's the human element of it. I love that. It's and and people don't element. realize that. Yeah. Change management is not project management. Uh, it's the human element and capacity in that. When you That's a workshop. It. Definitely a workshop. Yes. Yes. So I can consult in that because what happens is, let's say I just helped an organization with, unfortunately, reduction in force, right? Laying people off, uh, having to tell them and restructuring. You can't just say, okay, this makes sense. We have to think of the human element. How would people feel? How do you communicate effectively? So that's the consulting part. So I'll come alongside a company. I'll come alongside a company when it comes to how to strategize their culture if they want to change it, if they don't like some of the things that are occurring, or how to build up a team. That's consulting. So consulting is when I come alongside and I come in and I few weeks, a, you know, a few days that I'll come in and help the leaders of that organization. That's, that's amazing. I mean, it's gone way over my head a little bit, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but it's, I, I find it so in relation to the film and music, people that are in the creative arts, how mm -hmm. could you help coach someone that's wanting to be an artist out there or launch their product or be more of a management material how could mm -hmm. you fulfilled to be how could that help someone in coming from that perspective i think the biggest thing if you scroll if you scroll up a little bit yeah you can see no the other way sorry down then down. No, the other. <laughs> wait 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 yes coaching um yes. that's where the coaching would play in um into what i do um and so that would be the low life coaching right or even maybe career coaching if you were to look at that uh, life works on you know both of them are holistic that i work on but the focus on life is figuring out how to find your balance and purpose 
like what segment you want to do. And then we could transition into career of what are your fo- what is what is your long term goals that you want within the industry and what do you want to do? And then having clarity of kind of having those next steps and then even holding you accountable in those next steps. I think that's just as important. You know, you talked about I'm making it sound easy to do community service or help. Well, sometimes if you have someone to hold you accountable to it, it helps. So that's why coaching is a wonderful um, profession to have or avenue as a resource to make sure you hit your goals. Yes, and the leadership as well of it. The leadership and yes. I was going to say, so someone from singing or film or acting or how they just don't have their voice and they don't have the game plan, mm-hmm. you would you would be able to fulfill so to be able to help them focus on their game plan and bring clarity but also a human element to it as well through it oh, yes yes that's absolutely. phenomenal yeah Ginger, absolutely and is... then especially even if they're lo- in the united states um if they're employed i'll help them even from understanding their employment rights because of my human resources background um i remember um i actually I think it was a subcontract because sometime I work through other companies that I helped the film union, the actors union uh, in California. And I did some training with them. This I, I've really from talking with you in the way engaging with you, this, what you offer with fulfilled to be, it's necessary. It's a tool that's necessary for for anyone that's in the creative arts industry that mm-hmm. want to be sharing their their voice and their product with the yes. public domain mm-hmm. it, it just it can be so challenging sometimes right to speak your yeah. voice or figure out what direction you know within your career uh where should you go first or can you do all i think the biggest thing when i um i am certified in coaching and one of the key things they said is people are rainbows we're not one definitive monolithic way. There's so yeah. many varieties to us. I think the thing is how to prioritize and focus within what yes. to do next. Yes, absolutely. Um, can we just, um, Heather, can we close the the website now? It's a fabulous website. Thank I you. urge everyone, please do go on to KendraQDod.com. It's so fabulous. Thank and you. I was going to say, Kendra, you know, because I've been in the industry for a while as a singer, a songwriter, all this stuff, I was never had that support. I, I was having people say, time is money, like the manager pushing you, and when you're not ready and not bringing a human element to it, not bringing humility, just going, you got to do this, you got to deliver this, I don't care what you're feeling like, you just got to go out and do it because the show goes on no matter what. That's mm-hmm. so old programming mm-hmm. and it was so damaging. Mm-hmm. So for me personally, I really feel that it's so necessary and refreshing to have someone of your stature, your experience to be able to share and help them, those people in the creative arts Mm-hmm. I really feel that's um, necessary in every way because these some of these managers are they don't bring a human element to it and it's all about it's all about delivery and uh, and the the money mm-hmm. fortunately and, and unfortunately that's what I did when I was working on how to deal with uh, a toxic environment. I think that was with the union. And I didn't even understand, like, I was just shocked at some of the things that these individuals told me within the training um, of how, like, or some of them were costume designers as yeah. well. And so I am just a, the pressure I couldn't imagine. And then how they're treated, like you said, in that. And so then how to speak up for yourself, how to have I call them disarming opening conversations. Like, how do you introduce when you have someone that's you know, I'm using it loosely, a narcissist. How do you open up, right? Uh, you know, you start with something by saying, I don't know if you recognize, right? So trying to say, even though if you think that they know, I'm not sure if you're aware of, right? Saying things in a way that gives them benefit of doubt that they don't become defensive. And then speaking from your own, 
you know, point of view. And I actually talk about that within my book. I call it the seed method. And so it's a four step process. So what was the situation trying to think of the facts? And then how do you feel? What experiences made you maybe triggered or uh, your adrenaline goes up or made you feel sad or made you feel neglected? So where did that come from? So you'll know that and then separate that. And then the next E is figure out where they are, be empathetic, their point of view in this. And then D is coming to a determination and decide what to do next. A wealth, a wealth of knowledge and tools. Yeah. You you were meant to be out there 10 years ago, Kendra. We needed you 10 oh. years ago. Well, <laughs> but, thank you. I'm here now. I'm here now. You've you arrived now. <laughs> <laughs> so your book, Kendra, uh, where can people pub, uh, buy your, purchase your book? Any major um, bookstore uh online they can they can order it and then some people love amazon so it is on there as well <laughs> i love amazon as well so it is on amazon um so you can get it at every major bookstore even my publisher uh kirk house publishing so um every venue you can find it and is it also going to be available because you you have such a beautiful voice and you're all about the voice mm -hmm. and audible no, I need to. I, I people have asked. It is Kindle. I do have it on yeah. Kindle, but yeah. I know that's a, that's a fair assessment to have it on on Ken, on Audible. Yeah. yeah, because that would be just fantastic. Because it's truly engaging, and what you true what you're doing with your voice yeah. and how you're sharing your voice, and people yeah. will get that impact because mm -hmm. your that voice will be will be narrating your story and whatever they're doing they're truly yeah. engaging yeah no i'm gonna have to that would be an interesting journey because my favorite yeah. books on audible which i love audible are those in which the author is reading and not anyone else well there you go that's definitely going to be Thank another you. piece of conversation yeah. we can do for part two exactly for film and music show mm -hmm. i wanted to ask how do you have downtime, like chill time? Because you're going to be surrounded with so many different energies and working with different emotions as well. How do you let your hair down? Not let your hair, just, just chill out and relax. Right, right. Um, now that one is harder to say than do for me. <laughs> so I will tell you that is definitely harder. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is having that community to help you, right? So if, if you find something that's hard for you to do, you find people that will help you do it. I mean, honestly, I'm here right now. It's just me. I'm visiting a friend and uh, she helps balance things out for me. So she's making me making sure. So having a community, things that you strengthen each other where one is weak, one is strong uh, and helping do that. So that is part of why I'm here actually right now <laughs> to be able to find that. I love that having that safe space to be yourself without mm -hmm. having the role of the business. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I love it, Kendra. So before we close out, Kendra, is there anything you'd like to share with our viewers? Um, you know, I, I, what I'm really working on, if they're on LinkedIn, maybe they're not. Um, I am doing more of written common articles that I'm hearing within my clients. That's something new. So if they want to go on LinkedIn to see KendraCubeCup.com, every Wednesday I'm having um, a new um, article that I'm having. And then if they go on my website, I'm going to start back up at the first of the year doing newsletters again. That's more personal. So um, find me on those avenues to get to know me. But also, if you go to TalkToKendra.com, not many people if you do you can actually um, be able to set up a free consultation with me if you really are interested fantastic thank you for sharing that kendra and of course they can purchase your book yes that would be nice if you really uh, want got to, to yes <laughs> we need to plug the book your book yes. in every way and looking yes. forward to it as being an audible yes thank you that's good guidance i i received that feedback <laughs> i do <laughs> all right well thank you i just want to thank you so much kendra you've been an absolutely amazing guest for the film and thank music you. show 
And please do come back for part two in every yes. way. Part two, Audible, part done. Two. Yes, absolutely. And thank you so much. Thank you. And have thank a you. lovely rest of the holiday. Thank you. Yes, have thank you so much. Now that you've got your suitcase back, put on the clothes, girl, and go and party. I am ready to go. Exactly. <laughs> Woo! Thank you very much, Kendra. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, there you have it. Beautiful Kendra Q. Dodd. Please do reach out to her. Please do go on her website, KendraQDodd.com. Find out about her. And honestly, you creatives, all creatives out there, we need, we require, it's a, it's a necessity to have someone of Kendra Q. Dodd's um, experience and her true connection to the creative arts as well, because she's a musician and a singer, my goodness, and understanding human resources and helping you engage to bring out your confidence on a human element. I love that, with the human element. What fabulous. It's always wonderful having all different guests in the creative arts field coming from all different spectrums of jobs. My name is Dr. Madeline Chan, and before we close out, I just want to say thank you to our main sponsor, Audi K Barrier and Songs for You. And I just want to say if anyone would love to be a guest on the film and music show, or you have a friend who is creative in the film and music sector, please do go on to usaglobaltv.com slash book your session go on to there and scroll down find the film and music show and please do book we are now booked we're looking for october now so anyone out there please do book with us and i just want to say thank you so much thank you to dr jacqueline Chief of Operations and the founder of the Mothership USA Global TV and Radio. Thank you to our producer, Heather, the lovely Heather. She's been wonderful today. And thank you, viewers, USA Global TV, radio viewers, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and YouTube viewers as well. My name is Dr. Madeline Chan. And before we close out, we are going to leave you with a word from the sponsors. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Five Little Known Secrets for Dementia Caregivers with Tracy Cram Perkins. Hi there. I am Tracy Cram Perkins, the host of the Dementia Home Care Show here on USA Global TV and Radio. I am also the author of the book of the same name. And you'll see this QR code. This is for an extended version of the same talk. So if you want to see the full hour long version, feel free to scan the code and go to that website. Stick with me. We'll talk about five little known secrets to make it a little easier to do dementia caregiving. What you're seeing on the left hand side is a healthy aged brain, age 55 and above. The one you're seeing on the right is an Alzheimer's disease brain. It is in moderate disease. It is shrinking. It has holes in it. The memories that were in those holes no longer exist. When you're learning something, let's say in kindergarten, you learn how to tie your shoelace. Well, then by the time you're in second grade, your brain remembers that information from tying the shoelace and applies it so you can learn more quickly how to tie more complex knots. So the brain is hardwired to do this for us. So it helps us learn faster so it doesn't take as long to acquire knowledge. The brain is looking for the information and they pick the closest to wherever that hole is. Let's look at some tips that we can use to help do that. These are five simple tools you can use as a dementia caregiver to help your loved one. The whiteboard is a useful tool in recording the day's activities and the answers to repetitive questions. The calendar clock is a very useful tool to orient your loved one on the day, the date, and the time and remind them of upcoming appointments. The communication cards are a great tool to bridge the gap when they can no longer tell you what's wrong. And then there's the pill minder for when your loved one is still able to take pills but needs prompting. The final tool I want to share with you is the memory book. It tells your loved one's story. It's a great tool for distraction, redirection, 
also as a conversation starter and telling you where they are in their story so you know how to answer their questions. Music is probably the most powerful tool in your toolbox after laughter. Music is a way to maintain connection. It sticks with your brain longer than any other thing, including reading. When you're having an issue with somebody, you can play their favorite music if you move them to another room, something that makes them happy. Or you can start singing songs together from their childhood. These are some of my favorite books for caregivers. My show airs on the third Tuesday of every month, and you can view past episodes on YouTube. Thank you, everyone. This program has been brought to you in part by Tracy Cram Perkins. Connect with her and order her book at tracycramperkins.com. For more information about Alzheimer's disease, support resources, and how you can help, contact the Alzheimer's Association at 1-800-272-3900 or visit their website at www.alz.org. They offer 24-7 helpline support and a wealth of information to assist you and your loved ones.